Hello guys, and welcome back to another episode of M Crater Procedures. So today, what we're going to be looking at is the AI pathfinding block that you can now see in 2023.1. Uh, that's when it was added in. Uh, there's a couple different triggers that you can use. You can use this global particular trigger or you can use it on custom entities on the update tick it needs to be running from a tick update of some sort in order to actually have them um, constantly go to the target location uh, it's just the way that the AI block functions so when you're actually running those particular things make sure that it's set up like that so basically what we have here is a basic system. Uh, we need a if statement. The easiest way to actually set this up is basically what I'm going to be showing you. Uh, you're going to need an and statement of some sort. And then what you're going to need is to run it on uh, server side in order to make sure that it's running only on the computer side of things, not so much on the client visual graphics card thing. So that's why we're doing that. It helps with performance. Because it's on a tick update, we don't need to worry about the performance of it happening to be on player or whatever. Next, we need to test for the entity that we're going to be running from. Now, this method using the global procedures will allow you to basically do any entity including custom entities um, as long as it's implemented into the thing you can use tags as well for basically using it and then what we need is some sort of way to trigger the event on and off so we're going to use a mbt for the entity and we're just going to go go to target and then finally inside of this what we can do is we can set a couple variables so we're going to make sure that we test for two things uh, one being the coordinates for the range of where the entity is currently at. And we're going to test between a certain period. Now this period should be roughly um, two blocks uh, away from the actual target location. I found that two blocks is pretty much the soft point for actually making it uh, work. Um, if it's 1.5, then it still has some issues. This is basically a graph of where the entity will basically consider the area as it's reached uh, using the two block method. Everything in the blue is basically where the entity will travel. Red is the target. Green is the actual location. So 1.5 obviously won't work, but 2 seems to work just fine. So that's why we're doing that. And then what we need is we need to get the entity's X location. And we're going to duplicate that for both of these blocks. And we're going to place that down here. Once we've done that, what we can do is we can go ahead and we can set uh, an MBT. So we'll be using an MPT for target X, which is just a variable that I'm going to be calling or storing the target location where the entity should be going. And then we're going to be subtracting or adding based on the range. Now we're going to do this for the Z coordinate. Now this is most handy for um, actual land entities. I'll go into how to adapt this for uh, flying entities as well. Or in this case it could be fish entities. But like swimming entities. Uh, once we've done that we need to go and grab the... Uh, Z block for the Z coordinate and then we can go ahead and finally make sure that we set the variable uh, for the go to target back to false. So we will need to make an else statement later on but we're going to set the go to target to false here. This will make sure that the um, entity will go back into the mode where it can do its regular AI tasks and stuff. So after we've done that, we're going to make an else statement and then we're going to go to the uh, entity management tab and scroll all the way down and grab the pathfinding block. And this is where we're going to actually set the pathfinding. So under here, what we want to do is we want to basically, this is the speed and then you can adjust the position where you want the entity to go. This is probably best through variables such as MBT or global variables, things like that. Uh, you can probably load it from config as well, so there's a few different options. 
Uh, so we're just going to use these two coordinates that we are using in the script above and then that way we can basically set up that. Now again if you're going to be using like water and land creatures you're going to be able you're going to need to update the y axis the y direction for more precise um, direction testing and stuff like that. Uh, it, again there's a whole bunch of conditions that you'll have to take into consideration but this is just the basic tutorial that I'm going to be covering today. Um, I'll let you kind of play around with what you need but uh, once you know the fundamental stuff it'll be easier to kind of adapt the script to what you need. So now we need a basically a condition or a procedure to actually run the variables for enabling it and setting the position. So we're going to use a entity right clicked on. So a player right clicks on entity and then we're going to set a condition where if the entity is not or um, I believe if it's what did I do here I basically went ahead and tested if the variable was not true so the going to variable is not true and for the entity that we want to basically run the script on so this in this case we want to run it on a pig again you can use um, entity tags as well for this. It doesn't have to be a selector like this, but you can run tags. And then we're going to go ahead and just copy over the variable that we set over here for the logic one. And we're going to paste it here. This is basically our just of the script that we need to do. And then what we need to do is go and grab the variables for setting the X and Z location as well as the go to direction. So we're going to set the variable here and that needs to be set to true so it will be enabled for the other script. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and grab the target X and we're going to go ahead and set the target X to um, the X location for the entity. So basically when the entity is right clicked on we want it to be in the same X axis or same X location and we want to update the Z location to something like 64 blocks dif difference just for tutorial. You get more precise locations based on what you need. Uh, you can run this from pretty much any trigger that um, requires. You can have something that runs completely on update tick or something like that for the entity. But in this case, we just want to offset the coordinate so the entity goes north 64 blocks. So that's what this will run. And then this script will run here um, and basically go to that location. So in game, uh, we can test for the pig. And we're just going to go ahead and go over here to this location right here. And we're just going to place down a pig. And we're going to right click on him. And he should start walking towards the middle of the field. Uh, you can probably already notice now he's basically under control of the AI pathfinding block uh, because he's not really stopping at this point. Uh, usually entities only go like a few blocks away and then stop. Um, this is generally how AI pathfinding works most of the time. So he's gone all the way up to here and now his AI um, regular tasks have basically kicked in and he's basically going ahead and doing whatever pigs normally do. So if we go ahead and take a look at the MBT, uh, we can go slash data. Uh, of course, he's going to move all over the place. We'll just set the command up. So data entity, and then we'll go ahead, whoop, not storage, entity, and then we'll use the copy that and go up to him and just make sure that we select it. So his UUID and then we can see his data. So we can see that there's forged data at the top there, target X and go to target is set to zero. This means it's false. Uh, target Z is also set. So that means he did go and do his command. So let's take a look at how you can basically do this quickly for a flying or swimming entity. Uh, basically what you need to do is for this script where your update tick is running, you're going to need another if statement or another and statement like this. You're going to update these two blocks and what you're going to do is use your Y coordinate. This will basically allow you to be more precise with your um, measurement where the location for the X and Y and Z are. 
Uh, this is probably needed for the creatures that you need more precise flying location that takes in consideration the up and down axis. Um, and again, you're going to need to make sure that the variable is set up for the Y position down here for the targeting as well. Um, for your other procedure, this one here, what you're going to do is you're going to basically set the Y position just like the other coordinates. And that's pretty much all that you need to do for making it work but um, yeah outside of that that's uh, pretty much all that you really need to do for using the pathfinding it can be used in many other ways you can run it from update tick and then set tasks to do certain things go to certain locations run script based on that but that's all the time that i have for thanks for watching peace out